being the hot young writer, you know, being on the front page of Variety, your name's out there, you're probably, your phone's ringing. And I know you, you've talked in other interviews about how some of that went away for a little bit. Can you talk about if someone else is in a similar situation, how they regroup? Yeah. What I'd like to do is give the single best piece of advice that I ever got that I ignored. And so what happened is when I was on the front page of Variety and all these offers were coming in, um, there was uh, an agent at my agency, Barbara Dreyfus, who didn't represent me, but she took me out to lunch and she gave me the following advice. She said, the next script you write is the most important script you'll ever write. It will determine the trajectory of your career. So right now, you, you were an unknown person. Now you're on everyone's radar. You worked with a high-profile director. He's planning on making it, the movie. He said how great your script was. Everybody in town wants to work with you. So everyone is like so hyped up on you. Now, there are writers who are commodity writers. They, they go in and they write these big summer movies and these big action movies. They make a lot of money. But there's nothing special about them. And then there's writers who are A-list writers, writers who have these amazing careers. The next script you write will put you on a trajectory. So her advice was this, don't take any job that you wouldn't have done for free, which is to say you love this project and you believe you could just knock it out of the park. You love this so much, you would do it without getting paid. Now we're gonna get you paid, but don't take anything that falls short of that. And you'll have to say no to a lot of stuff because most of what they're gonna offer you is crap or just not a good fit for you. And the offers will start to slow down and you're gonna panic and think you have to grab the next best one. Don't. And the offers will keep slowing down. And I'm telling you this, that even, you'll think the offers will eventually go away and they won't, but even if they do, literally you've said no to everything, spec your next script and make it something that you love and knock it out of the park. Cause she said, if the next one's amazing, then that puts you on a trajectory. That, then people see you a certain way. Later on is the time to do it for the money. Later on, we'll grab a lot of money. But right now, this next script, you're on, now everyone knows who you are. This next script is going to tell them what kind of writer you are. And when she said that, like I had that chill up my spine. Like this is absolutely true. I need to hear this and do this. And I said no to something. I said no to something. The third time I said no, it was a Disney project. And they doubled my quote. And I said no. And they doubled my quote and I said yes. And I'm embarrassed to say that that project of all the projects was not only a script I didn't want to write, it was a movie I wouldn't even want to see. But it was sudden, I don't come from money, I had student debt, and it was more money than I ever thought you could make in years and, and I was gonna get paid for three months. And so the precedent that I set, I think with myself at that point is I'm in this for the money. And, and, I, and that really locked me into a career path. And I, it was, I wish I could go back in time. I, I feel like that was a really big test and I failed it. I, I, I could see where a lot of people would not blame you. I, and I'm not even sure which project you're, you're referring to, forgive me, but That's fine. Uh, I mean, so you really feel like even the money that you took and probably it changed many things for you because money money can do wonderful things. It can right. also hurt, but uh, I mean... But here's the thing. If I hadn't taken that yeah. project and that project never got made and, you know, as a writing sample, I think it was, it was good, but it wasn't special. If I had waited and waited and took something else or even did something original and if it was great, I would have made so much more money down the road, down the, I mean, so, you know, my agent, you know, represents me, but he also represents Aaron Sorkin. Um, I worked nonstop as a studio writer for 11 years. I made a lot more money than I ever thought I could make. Do you, do you know the difference between how much money Aaron Sorkin has made? I don't know, but I can, I'm sure that what Aaron Sorkin makes is not even in the same zip code as what I made. He also represents J.K. Rowling. Now, I'm not saying that I could have become Aaron Sorkin or that level, or I could have been J.K. Rowling. I don't know. But what I do know is that the choices I made prevented that from being a possibility. I was a studio writer. I just kept doing a bunch of action movies 
And some were action comedy movies. Sometimes I thought they were fun. Sometimes I didn't. But I loved the paycheck. And I loved just making the money and the deal. And I never stopped and wrote from my heart. I never wrote. And I'll tell you, one of the main reasons is I was so fixed mindset. I was so afraid of rejection. I was so afraid that every script I wrote, I was afraid that people would say, oh, you're not that good of a writer. You're a fraud. Now, if I wrote something from my heart, if I wrote something that was authentic, that exposed me into the material, now they could say, you're not a good writer and you're not even a good person. Like they could reject me as, if they rejected my material and it was very personal, then that would feel like they were rejecting me as a person. And that was too painful. I was not going to allow that to happen. I mean, my agent was begging me to write something authentic and from my heart. My wife was begging me. My manager was begging me. My golden retriever was begging me. And I just wouldn't. And so it's just, it's just A, it was short-sighted. First of all, money isn't everything. But even if money is everything, I potentially could have made so much more money. But more importantly, I could have written stuff that I was in love with. And I could have... Look, maybe I would have... I could have tried for that career. I could have written authentic stuff. I could have swung for the fences. I could have tried for that A-list career and maybe come up short. And, and then backed into the career I had. Maybe. That I, there's no, I don't know. But I know that the choices I made meant I was never going to have that career. I was never going to be creatively fulfilled. I was never going to be writing the stuff that I really wanted to be writing. I was never going to be writing from love. I was always going to be writing from fear. I regret that. And so part of the reason I teach is I want to help writers do it the right way and help empower them with the tool. I wish someone taught me creative integration up front and some of the stuff. But I, I, I hope that I can be an influence on writers so that they can have the best possible career that they're capable of and maybe even a better one than that. So if you were to take yourself to lunch instead <laughs> of that woman yeah. and that it was, it was an older you talking to that younger you, would you have said the exact same thing? Or I would have. A little bit? And I would have said, and look, I'm from the future, so let me tell you. <laughs> and I would, have, I would have told them all the terrible things that happened. And I, I honestly think that that younger me would have made the same decision. And the reason is it, he, he was so fixed mindset. And fixed mindset, you are just working from fear. And you just can't see the truth. Or you can't... I, I, and, and hopefully that's not true. Ho hopefully I would have. But anyway, I'm not confident that I would have made a different decision. I'm not proud of that, but I think that's the truth. But I will say, you know, one of the things my wife... My wife always sees, like, the real truth. And, you know, one of the things she says, like, all of things that happened in my career was actually a blessing. I mean, it softened me up. It got me out of this fear space. And, and I wouldn't be the teacher that I am now had I not made those mistakes and gone through that. And I did make a lot of money, which is nice. So it's like, you know, it, it, it had a lot of perks. But yeah, I wish I could have done it differently.